What a pleasure it is to be here with all of you and for me to be in Sharjah and Dubai, where I came here for the first time in 2012. And now I have many close friends and almost family members here, and it is like a home away from home. Uh, one of my friends is Shimon Bassar, who most of you probably know. And we were talking about the word manifesto and, and what it means in the 21st century. And maybe it means nothing. It's sort of a very 20th century thing to like say, a manifesto. So what would it mean now? Is it a to-do list? Is it a, you know, a mood board on Pinterest? What is a manifesto in the 21st century? And that got me to thinking, well, maybe why don't we start thinking with ideas and perceptions of my own, which maybe are shared with you. And so I'm going to read them out here. And a series of first-person statements that together have some sort of cumulative effect. I will say that I don't read as much as I used to. It mildly horrifies me when I read a book and part way into it, I think to myself, this is what my brain used to feel like. I think reading books has almost become a form of temporal ecotourism. And I do believe that reading fosters a sense of individualism, and I believe that the internet fosters a sense of just being one more unit among seven and a half billion other units. I miss my pre-internet brain. I no longer remember my pre-internet brain. I find that if you really want to torture someone, tell them you just went on a vacation to someplace really lazy and then casually drop the information that you spent the entire time reading. I wonder if email is basically nothing more than some kind of emotional slot machine. I find it drives me crazy when I'm away from my email, even for a bit of time, and I fantasize that the best email I've ever had is sitting there, there in my email box, not being read by me. I often find myself rereading emails I've already sent. I don't know why I do this. I think that real time no longer feels well, neither real nor like time. And it bugs me that I can't tell if the internet has made me smarter or stupider. I miss people at the dinner tables. They're spouting bullshit and urban legends there at the table. I find it fascinating that people enjoy photographing their salads. <laughs> and I am uh, happy that the need to photograph one's salad has made chefs work harder. But there's something kind of sad that happens to your photograph when you photograph your salad. It's like you turn your salad into some kind of ghost. It's freaking me out that I've somehow damaged my sense of time, that time is now passing much more quickly. And I miss doing nothing. And I miss feeling clueless. And I miss feeling, I miss feeling bored. And I agree to all the above terms and conditions. I'm sad that my sense of time has gone kind of screwy, and I'm sad that 10 years from now, 10 years ago now feels like 10 minutes ago, and that 10 minutes ago feels like 10 years ago, and it's not an illusion. I think time really is moving more quickly. And I find I get nostalgic for continuity, and basically I miss time. I find it comforting that if you ignore an email in your email inbox long enough, you can simply delete it, and no harm is done. I spend a lot of time wondering whether the internet is going to ultimately favor the individual or whether it will favor the mob. I wonder if it's a heresy to our speciesood to no longer want to be an individual. I think it's embarrassing to be part of a generation. I find it odd that Americans used to care about things and then they just stopped caring. I think that confusing chaos with liberty is just plain embarrassing. I suspect that giving everyone in your country a criminal record makes them much easier to control. I think technology more often than not favors horrible people. I think bored people crave war. And I think that fate is for losers. 
And I've noticed that knowing you believe in something stupid somehow makes it much more sexy to believe in that stupid thing. I wonder if it's smart to assume that technology remains our only link to enlightenment. I wonder if automated governments are inevitable. This is not my thought, but it is a good one. Religion is what keeps poor people from killing rich people. I wonder if non-political art can still be called art. I wonder if political art is merely politics. I wonder if maintaining your country's border isn't so much that you're protecting your politics, but rather protecting your country's brand. I think that anonymity is the food of monsters. And I miss being at the political center, but I wonder if the center is for losers. Let me ask you a question. If the Brexit vote were to happen again tomorrow, do you think the vote would still swing the same way? Perhaps. We, we seem to be at a magical new stage in this thing called democracy where we have to rethink core tenets about the wisdom of 51% of the population. It seems to me now that the majority can no longer be trusted. And it feels like what we need for democracy at the moment is some kind of electoral morning after pill. Can you imagine? Guess what, Britain? You don't have to Brexit after all. Well, but maybe not. Maybe a double vote on an issue would simply lead to the exact same percentage of results, albeit with more voters. And maybe a double vote would lead to a triple vote. And where do you draw the line? And here's a question. Will we be voting online in 20 years? Of course we will. Nobody doubts that. But right now, we vote in a mode so archaic, you know, depending on your jurisdiction, paper, pencils, cardboard boxes, scrutineers, that it feels like we're comparing centuries, not technologies, that Punch and Judy shows meets versus Netflix. So how do we get from here to there? I think that unless you have a genuine skill, like being able to perform an appendectomy, or unless you can make something that can't be downloaded like a cake or furniture, then you're doomed to becoming a member of the new global monoclass, cobbling together a living from small, skill-free gigs. I think being middle class was a lot of fun. I suspect that a fully linked world will no longer want or need a middle class. I think that in the future, every day of the week, is going to be a Thursday. And in the future, everyone's going to wear Halloween costumes 365 days a year. I think it is impossible for old technologies to solve the problems that are created by new technologies. And I believe that people make very bad decisions when, they get, when technologies change too quickly. Press pound now. Hello, I'd like to speak with a real human being. I think it's weird about human nature that we finally get the answer to any question you probably ever wanted for free anywhere on the planet with no judgment, no trace. And what do we do in response? We become mildly bored. I like that we think of the cloud as a sort of benevolent cartoon character. I think that most people don't know or care about the cloud's infrastructure. And I think poverty without a really good Wi-Fi connection would be truly, truly horrible. And I think poor celebrities are depressing. I secretly daydream, daydream, try again, Doug. I secretly daydream the cloud is going to one day allow me to have a conversation with myself. And I believe that wanting to be forgotten is no longer an option. It makes me happy that my data stream doesn't judge me. It seems that everyone talks about their data, but what does your data even look like? And if you saw it, what would, would you even know what to do with it? I think data is the new time, and I think the cloud is the new infinity. To be honest, I want nothing more in my life right now than to get shit-faced drunk inside a driverless car. I like it that there's no shopping on Game of Thrones. I think lonely, isolated people consume more than happy people. And I like to think about prisoners in the American penal system in jail using their internet to shop on Amazon. 
And I wonder if those people represent the future, if in the future we'll all be in jail shopping online. I think that if we get bored of shopping, then we're really in trouble. I think that healthy people are bad for capitalism. I think unhealthy people eat more, they drive more cars, they pump way more money into medical infrastructure. I sometimes feel as if you live in a world that's run by billionaires who were born in caves. I wonder if, from a certain standpoint, we might say that sharing is merely ownership for losers. I wonder sometimes if capitalism kills you, but first it puts you to sleep. I wonder if the urge to be an individual is a form of brain mutation shared by only about 15% of the population, and that the natural state of the human mind is to be a non is to be a non-questioning part of the herd. I worry, what worries me sometimes, that I look at the world and it looks more like clip art. It saddens me to think I can't remember when it was I stopped enjoying speaking with people on the telephone. I find it bizarre that 10-year-olds know the difference between CC and BCC on a document. I find myself hating technology when I phone someone and I have to keep pressing zero over and over and over to bypass endless decision trees. I wonder if machines are talking about me behind my back. I'd like to speak with a human being, please. I wonder if given the chance, will machines make better decisions than humans? What if it turns out machines actually like human beings? I think that at the moment, AI is just you and the cloud doing a small dance together with relatively simple algorithms. But soon enough, everyone's going to be dancing with the cloud up in some cosmic cyber ballroom. And everyone's data stream is going to be communicating with everyone else's data streams. And these data streams will be talking about you. What did you buy today? What did you drink, ingest, excrete, inhale, view, unfriend? Read, lean towards, reject, talk to, smile, get nostalgic about, get angry about, link to, or get off on. I think if all of your quotidian data hits are put together with corporate, government, corporate and government data banks, that you end up becoming something that is humblingly easy to predict, anticipate, model, forecast, and replicate. Tie this new machine intelligence realm in with some of those smart 3D graphics that have captured your body metrics and likeness, and a few years down the road, your physical version of you will become somewhat behind, beside the point. A dematerialized parallel you already exists out there in the cloud. But instead of being good or evil, it's mostly just machines telling other machines that you recently purchased a PK knit polo shirt and tones flattering to your skin. Here's something. Let's say you wake up one morning and you go to work on a big project with a close deadline. So you spend the whole day working behind a screen, in front of a screen, with a few breaks to get a snack. And then you go to bed, and technically, with the exception of getting a snack, your entire day was almost entirely AI. I think too much leisure time is a terrible idea. I think that it's good that billions of people spend good chunks of their time online. I think that billions of people being out in the real world doing real things would be a disaster for the planet. I wonder if there's no next big thing. I wonder if Google and iPhones are it, that they are the acme of humanity's tech capability, and for the rest of our human history, the best we can hope for is slightly better versions every year. I find it kind of exciting to just sit in a chair and wonder what amazing and life-changing new technologies are hurtling towards us right now like a meteorite that we cannot stop. I think the future loves us, but I don't think the future needs us. And I'm unsure whether the present is kind of too interesting or too boring. I look at movies and TV from the 70s and 80s, and I feel really sorry for the characters in the shows because they have so little technology. I wonder where personality ends and where brain damage begins. 
I find it weird that people actually want to be interviewed. And I wonder what it is people can learn about themselves in an interview in no other, other place. And I wonder if we'll ever invent a pill that makes us feel more like ourselves. I wonder what it would feel, to be, feel like to be more like myself, except, what would that? I wonder what the inside of my head would feel like without language. When I'm having an argument with myself, which of my two voices is the real me? I believe that the opposite of fame is no longer anonymity. I think that the opposite of nobody is no longer somebody. I believe that the right to be invisible is a fundamental human right. And I believe that we need to invent new ways of disappearing. I wonder why being an object is always portrayed as a bad thing. I wonder if there are situations in which being an object is actually a good thing. Hi, I'm all that toxic crap that you keep underneath the kitchen sink. Hi, I'm that useless trip you took to Europe last April. Hi, I'm all those fer fertilizers, herbicides, and pesticides out in the garage. Hi, I'm that margarine tub that you threw away back in 1987. I find it weird that we don't mind pumping detergents and solvents into the planet's ecosystems just so long as, we, as long as we've added a bit of dirt or shit with it. I wonder if nuclear winter will fix global warming. I wonder if animals look at human beings and recognize that our souls are kind of damaged. I wonder about God. I wonder if God is bored with human beings. I wonder if we should just bring back God again so we can kill him again. I wonder if the present and the future have sort of morphed into the same thing, like cheese melted onto a piece of toast. I find myself uneasy with the increasingly inescapable idea that the internet is the real world, as real just as much as this thing here we are in now, the real world. I feel like I'm dissolving into something, but I'm not sure what. And I think the downside of being connected is that always being connected is that you're always connected. I think the natural human attention span is about the length of a Beatles song. It concerns me that my life is no longer feeling like a story. And I wonder what it means that once my life felt like a grand narrative with a beginning, a middle, a denouement, and a moral, and now I am just one more individual unit amongst 7.5 billion other units. I think my blog is futile. I think all blogs are futile. It worries me that my life has become a sequence of dopamine hits that I get when I open a fresh email or watch a really good YouTube selected for me by YouTube's weirdly accurate algorithms. It concerns me that I find going back to my former laptop or slower Wi-Fi speeds is impossible. I find it's a small blessing that there's still a part of me that wants to fly in planes that have no Wi-Fi. I think that the end of the world is kind of corny. And I look at my life and I wonder, if there's something I could do to make myself feel more free, what would that be? What could that be? Is that art? I believe that art is up for grabs again. And I believe that there is deep shit beneath the shiny shit. And I think sharing is our only way out. I find it perplexing that our current collective desire as a species is to invent something smarter than ourselves in order to get us out of the mess we've all created for ourselves. I find it naive that we assume the singularity, if and when it emerges, is going to be a benevolent father figure like a 1970s TV dad. I suspect the singularity, if and when it emerges, is going to be a screaming, crying baby that lashes out at anything that annoys it. It freaks me out that everything that is happening to all of us is happening to us so quickly. It freaks me out that acceleration is accelerating. I find comfort in the fact that everyone on earth is feeling the same way. I miss time. I, like, I miss the way time used to feel classic time. I want my time back. I think that we people here in the room today are the last generation that's going to die. But enough about me, what about you? Let me talk to you. Let me tell you that you 
All of you are beautiful. Let me talk to you. Let me tell you that I find comfort in the fact that we all chose to be here today. Let me tell you that all of you are real. Let me tell all of you that your lives have meaning. And let me tell you that in your deeds and through your art, you will all live forever. And let me thank you. Thank you. <laughs>